Thank you. Amen, guys. If you would, please turn with me to Matthew chapter 24. Matthew 24. Jesus left the temple and was walking away when his disciples came up to him to call his attention to this building. Do you see all these things, he asked? Truly, I tell you, not one stone here will be left on another. Every one will be thrown down. Wow. He, he draws the attention of the disciples, some of the Jews, and there's this building, it's the temple, the holy building for the people of Israel. And he says, not one stone is going to be left. The entire thing is going to come down. You can imagine there's going to be some feelings. Verse three. As Jesus was sitting on the Mount of Olives, the disciples came to him privately. Tell us, they said, when will this happen? What will be the sign of your coming and of the end of the age? Jesus answered, watch out that no one deceives you. For many will come in my name claiming I am the Messiah and will deceive many. You will hear of wars and rumors of wars, but see to it that you are not alarmed. Such things must happen, but the end is still to come. Wow. And that even sounds like our times today. As uh, Jesus says, look, there will be wars and even rumors of wars. That was the truth back then. And that's even our truth today. He said, there will be people that claim to be the Messiah. And will say, I am the son of God. There are people in our world that are doing this as we speak. And are leading hundreds, thousands, maybe even millions. of people. If we keep on reading, verse 7. Nation will rise against nation and kingdom against kingdom. There will be famines and earthquakes in various places. All these are the beginning of birth pains. Verse 9. Then you'll be handed over to be persecuted and put to death. And you will be hated by all nations because of me. At that time, many will turn away from the faith and will betray and hate each other. And many false prophets will appear and deceive many people. Because of the increase of wickedness, the love of most will grow cold. But the one who stands firm to the end will be saved. Wow, he says, look, there, many, many are going to come to the faith. Many are going to come to the knowledge, become followers, disciples of Jesus. But there are some that are going to turn away and grow cold. But he says, look, if you want to make it to the end, stand firm and you will be saved. <laughs> Verse 14. This gospel of the kingdom will be preached in the whole world as a testimony to all nations. And then the end will come. So when you see standing in the holy place, the abomination that causes desolation spoken of through the prophet Daniel, let the reader understand then that let those who are in Judea flee to the mountains. Let no one on the housetop go down to take anything out of the house. Let no one in the field go back to get their cloak. How dreadful it will be in those days for pregnant women and nursing mothers. Pray that your flight will not take place in winter on the Sabbath. For then there will be great distress, unequaled from the beginning of the world until now, and never to be equaled again. Let's drop down to verse 26. One hard day. So if anyone tells you there he is out in the wilderness, do not go out. Or he here, here he is in the inner rooms, do not believe it. For as lightning that comes down from the east is visible even in the west, so will be the coming of the Son of Man. Wherever there is a carcass, there the vultures will gather. Well, Jesus says right here, the coming of Christ is going to be like a lightning bolt. You guys ever seen a lightning bolt before? It's pretty fast. And it's pretty scary too. And it's shocking. You ever experienced a lightning bolt close to you before? No. I hope not. Jesus says, look, beware of the person that claims to know when he's coming. Oh. And then he goes on. He says, look, where you see carcasses, there the vultures will gather. 
Let's drop down to verse 36 now. Come on, bro. I'm going somewhere. Trust me. Come on, bro. We're, we're getting verse 36. But about that day or hour, no one knows. Referencing the time when he's going to come back, when that lightning bolt's going to come, if you would. That day or hour, no one knows. Not even the angels in heaven, nor the son, him. So even he doesn't know. <laughs> but only the father. So why do we have people nowadays claiming to know when Jesus is going to come back? Seriously, there, there are entire denominations of Christendom that have predicted Christ's coming time and time again. There are some that they predicted it once they were wrong, so then they updated it to like a couple more years. They were wrong again, so they pushed it up another couple of years. Like a, like a package that keeps on just getting like uh, extended. You know what I mean? You guys ever get those packages that just takes forever to come in? It's the software update, exactly. Thank you, Nate. <laughs> to, to predict Christ's coming is not biblical. Biblically speaking, he doesn't even know. Only God himself knows. Verse 37. As it was in the days of Noah, so it will be at the coming of the Son of Man. For in the days before the flood, people were eating and drinking, marrying and giving in marriage. Up to the day Noah entered the ark. And they knew nothing about what would happen until the flood came and took them all away. So ironic because Noah was telling everybody. It says here they had no idea the flood was coming. They called him crazy because he was saying there was a flood coming. All of a sudden they had no idea. (laughs) Kind of hard to believe. That is how it will be at the coming of the son of man. Two men will be in the field. One will be taken and the other left. Two women will be grinding with a hand mill. One will be taken and the other left. Therefore, keep watch because you do not know on what day your Lord will come. But understand this. If the owner of the house known at what time of the night the thief was coming, he would have kept watch and would not have let his house be broken into. So you must be ready because the son of man will not come or will come at an hour when you do not expect him. What we get from Jesus here, he came on earth, lived a sinless life. He was crucified, died, resurrected, ascended back into heaven, but he's coming back. You know, Jesus coined the term before Arnold when he said, I'll be back. That's the title of our lesson this morning. I'll be back. We know he's coming back. We know how he's coming, though we don't know when. But he's coming like a lightning bolt, like a thief in the night. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I don't know if you guys have ever been robbed before. When I was 19, I, I moved out of my mom's house. I was so excited to be on my own. Had my own apartment, had my own place. And uh, just like a month into moving. And this was not a nice neighborhood. It, it wasn't the worst, but it was not the greatest by any means. I left one night to go see my brother's basketball game. And I come back to find my window broken in. And almost all of my stuff taken. I had a MacBook, a PlayStation 4 that I bought with my own money. Stolen. <laughs> Thousands of dollars worth. <laughs> These people were so bold. I had like a a stack of a few DVDs because DVDs were a thing at that time. (laughs) They still exist, believe it or not, actually. (laughs) But I... These robbers were so bold that out of the stack, they they selected the ones that they wanted. (laughs) The same with my video games, too. Like, they just chose the ones that, instead of just throwing the whole thing in a bag and running, they picked and chose. 
I'm pretty sure they stole something out of my fridge too. Like it's such hard work. They got to get a refreshment. They got to get a snack. <laughs> now I was a, I was a broke college student, 19 years old, living in my first apartment had no money it was very upsetting if i would have known that person was coming sorry brother i can't go to your basketball game <laughs> i've got to be here tonight <laughs> right are you with me <laughs> like if you parked your car somewhere and you knew it was going to get broken into um, you're probably not going to park your car there <laughs> that's what jesus is saying right here He's saying, look, he's coming at a time like a thief in the night when we do not expect it. In fact, the Bible says it's usually at a time where we least expect it. So what does that mean for us? We've got to be ready. Got to be ready at all times. Let's uh, close out this passage here. Verse 45. One, bro. It says, who then is the faithful and wise servant? whom the master has put in charge of the servants in his household to give them their food at the proper time. It will be good for that servant whose master finds him doing so when he returns. Truly, I tell you, he will put him in charge of all his possessions. But suppose that servant is wicked and says to himself, my master's staying away a long time. And he then begins to beat his fellow servants and to eat and drink with drunkards. The master of that servant will come on a day when he does not expect him, and at an hour he is not aware. He will cut him to pieces and assign him a place with the hypocrites where there will be weeping and gnashing of teeth. Um. <laughs> This is a very vivid imagery that Jesus is giving us. This is a story that he's using. This isn't something that actually happened, but he's using this story in correlation with God. Who's the servant? Well, the servant's you. (laughs) You're the servant. It says the servant that is bound faithfully doing the work it'll be good for them right but but the the servant that is not of course we see what their outcome is going to be you get to decide you get to decide which servant you want to be you get to decide the servant is a Christian. If you are a disciple of Jesus, you are a servant. A servant is a lowly position by worldly terms, but a servant of God is the greatest position you could ever have before God's eyes. And if you're a disciple of Jesus, God has entrusted you to be a servant. He has entrusted you to serve him. He has entrusted you to serve others and he's coming. He's coming back like a thief in the night. You know, this past week we had our campus blitz here at college of DuPage and uh, it's been really awesome. Uh, You know, we've been on campus every day for hours, morning to night, sharing our faith with students, being in Bible studies on uh, Friday night, Technically, Saturday morning, we had our all-night prayer. We were here on this campus literally all night praying over that little area right there, the amphitheater by the back building. And it's been incredible. Now, one of the days I was, I shared with this guy on campus, really sharp looking guy. And I shared my faith with him and I let him know about the Bible studies we have on campus. I invited him, wanted him to come out. And his response was, Oh, I've already received Jesus. I'm good. I'm set. 
Don't worry, I'm all set. I, I didn't say much. I just wanted him to come out to the Bible study. But in my Bible, I don't, I don't see those words in there. My Bible says that you need to work out your salvation with fear and trembling. My Bible says that the road is narrow. My Bible says you put in every effort. And that, that's truly what Christianity is. It wasn't meant to be easy. It was meant to work out with fear and trembling. Yes, there is an aspect of, of, of a fear of God. I don't know about you, but I want to be right with God more than anything else. So I am fearful for my salvation. That, that is my heart's desire. There, there's a fear aspect of it, but there's also the, the, the flip side as well. At the end of the day, where I want to be is heaven. Yeah. What I want more than anything is heaven. This world is not my home, but it's heaven. Yeah. I want to be able to spend the rest of my existence with God. Now, I want to leave you guys with this passage in Hebrews chapter 3. Come on, bro. Come on, bro. Okay. Preach. Or rather, Hebrews 4. Hebrews 4 in verse 12. It says, For the word of God is alive and active, sharper than any double edged sword. It penetrates even to dividing soul and spirit, joints and marrow. It judges the thoughts and attitudes of the heart. Nothing in all creation is hidden from God's sight. Everything is uncovered and laid bare before the eyes of him to whom we must give account. And the church said, it says the word of God is alive and active, meaning it's relevant to you. Although this was written thousands of years ago, it is still relevant. It's relevant to your life. The word has eternal meaning, eternal consequences, eternal promises. And then it goes on and says it's sharper than any double-edged sword. How sharp is the Bible? It can cut between Thoughts and attitudes, something that we would typically think to be the same thing, but it even cuts, it even cuts between that, between soul and spirit. The Bible goes on and says, nothing in all creation is hidden from God's sight. I like how it mentions attitudes of the heart, and then it says nothing's hidden from God. Meaning that even our own attitudes, God sees it. But it, it's all going to be brought before God. God knows us. He knows everything. Jesus is coming back. If there's anything I, I want you to walk away from this morning, I, I want you to walk away with an urgency. An urgency about your relationship with God. And an urgency about where you stand before God. But not only for yourself, but what about those close to you? Yeah. The people that you know, even the, the people out in the world that you don't. There, there are, I, I guarantee there are millions out there that in the back of their mind, I'm good. I'm all set. I'm straight. Some religious people have more faith than I do. <laughs> To have faith that you're all set. Let's not be like that. Let's be those who live our lives every day, ready for Jesus to come back and to meet our creator. I love you guys. To God be all the glory. 